The Mega Processor is a computer as big as a living room and it's been in national and international news. But there's a lot about this amazing feat of engineering that the media doesn't tell you about. So I went down to Cambridge just to find out a little bit more and speak to the man behind it. Yep, okay, so it's got to be loaded with the game of Tetris because that's what everyone can, seems to think it's the whole purpose of it. Yeah, um, that's headlines, yeah, but obviously yeah. you can do a lot more than that. Yeah, yeah, it makes good headlines, that's fine. This is the, the RAM, which I've built out of discrete transistors. Yeah. 256 bytes, uh, 2048 bits. Um, I did originally intend it to have the programming data on here so that you could see everything, just the computer and the memory and everything in it. Yeah. Um, but then I tweaked that actually you can use it as a display. Okay. So that's what tends to get useful. Yeah. Control and I.O. So if you like, the, so the processor's on that side, yeah. and it joins the outside world from back here, so this is the external interface. So this is the outside world, so I now myself some modern technology. Yeah. Um, make things a bit easier. So I actually give myself a whole bunch of extra memory here, so it's about 32k byte. I'll get it from there, that's where the program's actually running from. And then uh, I've got an FPJ here to do some peripherals, a counter, timer, and some yeah. I.O. So it's the I.O. I've got at the moment, so I stole that from a PlayStation, I think it was. Oh. Um, and then the other key thing here is the control, um, as in clock and reset. Yeah. So we can control the speed of the processor here, this is clock speed in hertz. Okay. So you can um, slow it down if you're looking around there, you can start to see the, uh, as we slow down to the human time scale, you can start to see it doing these things. And then you can halt it and then do single steps. So you can actually step, follow every bit of the logic as it goes through. Okay, um, yeah. So that's part of yeah, how you might try to explain how things work. Now we're into the processor real. Okay. Uh, so up here we have the state machine, which is the kind of um, uh, controls the sequencing of things. So some instructions take several cycles to run. So, so this is the um, instruction decoder. So the instructions land here where they're coming from yeah. memory. Uh, and then this section down here works out what that instruction was and combines it with some of the um, information like the current state and status okay. to help the rest of the machine work out what's supposed to be happening there. Yeah. Coming down here, so special purpose registers, so things like the program counter, which keeps track of where you are in the program, yeah. uh, stat pointer, and then um, some registers for um, talking to the outside world, so looking at the address and if you're writing data, what that's going to be. Yeah. Further on, so this is the arithmetic and analytics, it's probably the most exciting part of the processor. Yeah. So that's where all the, um, the summons happen. So I've actually got two adders um, in here. So this is the one you use. Instructions, yeah. Um, but also, we need, need an adder um, for the program counter, so it needs to move through the program yeah. into um, that uh, increment and so forth. So it happens there. And then the last one is the general purpose registers. So these are the registers that the programmer you're normally aware of. So there's yeah. four of them um, here. Um, the and what some things may notice that as well as the all the transistor based stuff. Um, to make things a bit easier for us humans to understand, I've given some uh, seven segment displays yeah. here. So use a bit of chips for them, but you can disconnect those and they'll carry on working. But it's okay. just easier to read hex than binary. So, how long have you worked on the mega processor for? So I think it started about four and a half years ago, something yeah. like that. Then the first year was mostly um, design and prototypes and experiments, and then the build started after that, and then the main build was two, two and a half years, and then the testing and iteration after that. Yeah. And how have you managed to keep yourself going with it, in a way? Like, obviously, you've, you've talked about the four work. and a half years. <laughs> So the well to begin with it was quite it was relatively easy because it's just you're you're playing and you're yeah. experimenting with ideas and you're just trying things out. That's quite funny you can pick it up and put it down. Yeah. When it got to the main build, that got to be quite hard work. And then it's um, just having a rule of each day, every day, you have to solve at least a couple of little boards. Yeah. And then you can just look at it um, and yeah. having this and seeing things picking being picked off helps a little bit. But yeah. it's just a question of um, 
make sure each day you do something. Yes. <laughs> In your own words, um, what is the reason behind creating the mega processor? There was, a, there was a, a moment uh, a few years back when I was just done some experiments and a couple of conversations with um, various people. I just started to try and visualise what it would be like to actually be inside a computer and actually be able to see everything in it. Is it all transistors, be able to click them, watch the data run around on the little tracks, and see the data move from one side to the other, going through the ALU and the address is the other side, and actually see all of the data flow and understand why it's happening and how it is happening uh, from all levels, from a single, single transistor, all the way up to the gates and to the larger um, stem objects and so forth. And just, just see what it was like, what it was actually like. Yeah. What do you feel are your plans for the future of the mega processor? Are you planning to take it away to different places? Are you planning to put it in a museum anywhere? Or what kind of work have you got planned for? Um, well, in the very short term, I'm having some more open beds. Yeah. So we'll keep looking at that. Um, longer term, I want it to go to a, a good home. I don't think it will travel well. I think each yeah. time <laughs> something moves, something's going to break, or a few things will break. So <laughs> each time it moves, it has to be for a long period of time. Yeah. So uh, hopefully, uh, uh, if my deal, if my deal, anyone paying for it to be in a museum, um, showing people what goes on inside the phone, and perhaps looking down the youngsters uh, interested in what actually happens inside. And, yeah. Get you more the so in terms of on the mega processor itself, um, at the moment you've got Tetris installed on it, which I believe that's quite terrible at. But is there any other software applications you're planning to put onto it? Well, there's already um, lots of processes or yeah. Logic Echo, depending on where you come from, um, and Virtual Life. Yeah. So those are the three programs I wanted to start with. Um, my nephews are asking me to put snake on to it, and get a lot of other people have as well, so that'll be going on next. Um, and then, probably, uh, there'll be little exercises to try and show aspects of how a computer works. So I'm doing a series of little videos trying to explain how a computer works from a transistor up. Um, so I'm going through transistors and logic. At some point I'll get to a, explaining the processor. Yeah. And then I have little programs which show the different features. And, and different instructions. Well, the future sounds very exciting for the mega processor. So yeah, thank okay. you very much for having us. You're welcome. Thank you. Cheers for taking the time out to watch this video. Don't forget to give us a like and subscribe for more videos. I've been Jason from New Rising Media and I'll see you in the next video.